Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library and welcome to Rockin' Storytime. Let's start off by clapping our hands. Can you clap your hands along with me at home? Good job. Here we go. We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. To all our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. Great job, everyone. Now we're gonna stomp our feet. Are you ready? You can't see my knee, my feet. You can see my knees though. Here are my knees, one and two. Here we go, we're gonna stomp together. Are you ready? We stomp and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. To all our friends at story time, we stomp and sing hello. <laughs> Great job, everyone. Today, we're going to be reading stories about harvesting. So harvest is what happens after seeds are planted and then they start to grow. And if they're in a garden, they're tended. And when they're finally ready to be picked and gathered, that's called the harvest. So we're gonna say the word harvest. Can you say that word? Harvest, harvest. That's gonna be our word of the day for our bread and butter rhyme. For bread and butter, we clap our hands and we clap our knees. Clap our hands, clap our knees. Here we go. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say harvest as fast as we can. Harvest, 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 harvest. That's not too bad. Uh, let's try that again, ready? Harvest, 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 harvest. I don't know if it's getting clearer, but I definitely am spitting on myself. <laughs> I hope you're doing better at home. Let's try another, are you ready? <laughs> Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say harvest as slowly as we can. Harvest. Ooh, there's some really good sounds in there. We start off with an H. <sighs> Harvest. Great job, let's try another one, here we go. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say harvest as loud as we can. Harvest! Good job, one more. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say harvest as quiet as we can. Harvest. Good job. Let's see what our first harvest story is today. And this is called Amara's Farm. Amara's Farm is written by Janae Brownwood and illustrated by Samara Hardy. Let's see what happens on Amara's Farm. Amara has many plants on her farm. Today, Amara must find her pumpkins for her autumn potluck. Hmm, what do you know about pumpkins? Can you think of anything you know about pumpkins? Ooh, here's the inside of a pumpkin. A pumpkin is large and round, it's often orange, and it has a very thick shell, nice and thick. It grows on a vine, it has a hard stem at the top, and a mostly hollow center that has orange pulp, squishy innards, and many seeds. Let's help Amara find her pumpkin. So I'm gonna need everyone's help for this. Let's see. Hmm, a pumpkin is large and round. Is this a pumpkin? What do you think, are those pumpkins? No, that's an apple. An apple is round, but it's not large like a pumpkin. Has anyone been eating apples at their house? I know I've been eating a lot of them. Ooh, a pumpkin is often orange with lined ribs. Are these pumpkins? What do you think, are these pumpkins? No, that's a persimmon. A persimmon, we don't have a lot of them near my house, but persimmons are citrus, just like oranges. A persimmon is orange, but it has smooth, waxy skin with no ribs. A pumpkin has a thick and solid shell. Are these pumpkins? <laughs> what do you think, are these pumpkins? I bet you know what these are. No, those aren't pumpkins, those are potatoes. A potato is solid, but it has very thin skin instead of a thick shell. 
So when we eat a potato, we, we sometimes we just eat the skin right on it. Usually when we're having a pumpkin, we don't eat that thick, hard skin. We might eat the seeds on the inside or the, the pulp on the inside, but not like a potato. A potato, when it's cooked, you can kind of bite right through it, skin and all. A pumpkin grows on the ground among the leaves and along a vine. Is this a pumpkin? What do you think? Is that a pumpkin? No, it's, do you know what this is? It's cauliflower. It's cauliflower. Cauliflower grows on the ground, but it sprouts from the middle of its leaves and not along a vine like a pumpkin. A pumpkin has a hard stem that pokes out from the top of its shell. Hmm, is this a pumpkin? What do you think? Is that a pumpkin? No, that's an eggplant. Eggplant stems point upward, but they are also have leafy bottoms that hang downward. Do you think we're going to find that pumpkin? I hope so. Let's see. A pumpkin has one mostly hollow center. One mostly hollow center. Is this a pumpkin? No. Do you know what this is? This is actually called okra. Can you say that word? Okra. Yeah, okra. This is okra. Okra is hollow, but has many hollow spots throughout. Not one large open middle like a pumpkin does. A pumpkin has firm orange pulp. Is that a pumpkin? What do you think? Is this a pumpkin? Does that look like what an inside of a pumpkin looks like? No, that's a kumquat. Can you say that word? It's a really fun word. Kumquat. Kumquat. Yeah, that's right. That's a kumquat. Kumquat pulp is orange, but it's juicy and soft, not firm. A pumpkin has squishy innards with long, stringy fibers. Is this a pumpkin? What do you think? Is that a pumpkin? No, this is a fig. I don't know if anyone at home has seen a full fig, but sometimes we have figs in inside fig newtons or inside little cookies. But this is what it looks like before it turns into that. That's what the fruit looks like. This is a fig. A fig does have squishy innards, but no long stringy fibers. A pumpkin has many seeds with white shell. Is this a pumpkin? What do you think, is this a pumpkin? This is actually what used to be my favorite fruit when I was your age. No, this is a kiwi. A kiwi has many seeds, but kiwi seeds are black. They're not white like a pumpkin. A Mars potluck won't be complete without her pumpkins. Ah, we've searched and searched, but still no luck. Where, where, where can the pumpkins be? Hmm, are those pumpkins? Do you see a pumpkin on this page? It might be kind of hard to see. Can you see something right here? Why, yes, those are pumpkins. They are large, round, and orange with a thick shell. They grow along a vine and have a hard stem that points upward. And they each have to have a hollow center, orange pulp, squishy innards, and many white seeds. Hooray, we found Amara's pumpkins. And just in time for some bountiful snacks, which produce can you find at Amara's Potluck? Hmm, let's see, which produce can we find? What food or what plants can you find on the table? Let's see, here's the kiwis and the kumquats. Let's see, what else do we see? Do you see the pumpkins? I see the big pumpkins and you know what? Right here, the okra, we saw it sliced this way, but look, when you slice it down the middle, it looks like little stars. The end. And at the end of this book, it even has a recipe for molasses pumpkin bread. <laughs>
Great listening, everyone. I hope everyone at home learned a little bit about some fun kinds of plants. Now it's time for us to sing some harvest songs. And we're going to sing two songs that we've sang earlier in the season. One of them is going to use a word of sign language. So you're going to put your hand into a fist like this and you're going to flick it with the middle finger just lightly on the back of your hand. This is the sign language word for pumpkin. 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 That's right. So we're going to use the sign language word for pumpkin, but we won't use any other sign language. The other things will just be actions and not actual sign language words. So it goes like this. Pumpkin, pumpkin on the ground. How'd you get so big and round? Once you were a seed so small. Now you are a great big ball. Pumpkin, pumpkin on the ground. How'd you get so big and round? <laughs> Great job. Let's try that one more time. Are you ready? So let's get that sign language word out again. We're going to put our hand in a fist and we're going to lightly flick the back of our hand with our middle finger. Just like that. Here we go. Pumpkin, pumpkin on the ground. How'd you get so big and round? Once you were a seed so small. Now you are a great big ball. Pumpkin, pumpkin on the ground. How'd you get so big and round? <laughs> great job, everyone. Now we're going to sing our apple song. So for this one, you put your hands in two fists and pretend they're two apples. Here we go. Are you ready? We're going to start off by lifting our arms way above our heads like this. Good job. Here we go. Way up high in the apple tree, two little apples did I see. I shook the tree as hard as I could and down came the apples. And mmm, were they good. Great job. Let's do that one more time. Are you ready? Put your hands in two fists and reach them above your head. Here we go. Way up high in the apple tree, two little apples did I see. I shook the tree as hard as I could and down came the apples. And mmm, were they good. <laughs> Great job, everyone. Let's read our second and final harvest story. This is called Before We Eat. Before we eat from farm to table. Before we eat from farm to table is by Pam Bryson and illustrated by Matt, uh, Mary Azarian. Azarian, I believe. This is before we eat. So before we eat, there are lots and lots of things that happen to the food and lots of people that care for that food. Let's see what we learn in before we eat. As we sit down around this table, let's give thanks as we are able to all the folks we never meet who help provide the food we eat. Can you think of anyone who helps provide some of the food? Hmm, where did the food you eat come from? Maybe some of it comes from your own garden, but other food I bet comes from a supermarket or maybe from the farmer's market some place where other people have helped you get there. Let's see, they plow the ground and they plant the seeds. Tended fields and removed the weeds. They picked the food at harvest time, working in the heat and grime. They grazed the cattle. They fed the sows. You see someone's filling up their water trough right here. And then some of the piggies are even having some milk from their mama. Gathered eggs and milked the cows. They fished from boats out on the sea. Raised wheat and nuts and honeybees. 
thank the ones who packed the crates, sorted boxes, and checked the weights. Thank the drivers on the roads in their trucks with heavy loads. And all the clerks at all the stores who did the grocery selling chores. Look, there's some people checking out, others bagging. There's other workers back here. Thank the ones who bought the food, the ones who teach me gratitude. Oh, look, the parents are teaching how to buy and how to make a pie, I think. Do you think that's a pie? Sitting at this meal we share, we are grateful and aware. Sending thanks upon the air to those workers everywhere. The end. Great listening, everyone. Well, so let's see at your next meal if you can look at the food on your plate and think about the places that each thing comes from. Do you have any fish? Do you have any milk? Where did those things come from and who are all the wonderful people that helped you get them? <laughs> the end. Great listening, everyone. I think it's time for us to end once again with head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Can everyone get to your feet and find your head? Here we go. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose, boop, boop. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Great job, everyone. Do you think we can go a little faster? Here we go. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose, boop, boop. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Great job, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Great job, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And don't forget, if you live locally on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings at 1030, we have story time outside. And during bad weather days, we're moving inside. Just remember to wear your mask. Have a wonderful day, and I can't wait to read to you all next week. Bye-bye.